Okay, so good day once again, everyone. So for today, we're going to have a predictive modeling technique uh, for the discussions. No? And uh, predictive modeling is the machine learning techniques that would work best for any business that wishes to predict future business growth, uh, growth outcome. So after exploring the applications of this data science technique of many years, businesses are now finally maximizing its potential. So unique predictive models and algorithms that support predictive analytic tools are utilized by businesses. Now, to get the most out of predictive uh, analytic tools and use data to make informed decisions, a business must determine which predictive data modeling techniques are optimal. But before we drive into predictive models and methods, let's get a clear understanding of what predictive modeling techniques entail. Because using existing data, predictive modeling techniques construct or train a model that can predict outcomes for new data. So implementing such techniques enables uh, businesses to optimize decision making and generate novel insights that results in more effective and lucrative actions. So as what I have earlier, no, uh, example, so utilizing predictive modeling techniques no, like healthcare organizations can optimize diagnostic procedures. These techniques are used by financial institutions like banks no, uh, to detect and prevent fraudulent activities. No? And these techniques are utilized by retail stores no, to optimize their inventory levels, increase customer satisfaction, and others. So predictive modeling is a statistical technique that examines data patterns to predict upcoming events or outcomes. Uh, it is crucial component of predictive analytics, no? a type of data analytics that uses machine learning and data mining techniques to predict activity behavior, uh, activity behavior and trends based on current and historical data. So how to predictive and modeling techniques benefit businesses? Because using predictive models, no? organizations implement predictive analytics in order to make better business decisions. So predictive models enable businesses to better comprehend their customer base, forecast future uh, sales prospects, and others. So I just want to give you a few of the ways in which predictive models are advantageous to various businesses. Number one, implement techniques to acquire a competitive advantage. No? They can gain a better understanding of consumer base and their needs assess and mitigate financial risk, enhance existing products to increase revenue, minimize time and expenses in predicting outcomes, anticipate external factors that may affect productivity and others. So, for, for instance, financial institutions may collect a customer credit history and other historical data using predictive modeling. Then, they could use this information to determine a person's credit score and likelihood of making timely credit payments. So some predictive modeling examples, no? uh, in real world use cases illustrating how various industries are leveraging predictive models to accelerate workflows and increase revenue. <clears throat> A while ago, no? I mentioned about retail. So predictive analytics assist retailers uh, in multiple regions with inventory planning and dynamic pricing evaluating the success of promotional campaigns and determining the optimal personalized retail offers for customers. <clears throat> Staples has achieved a return on investment of 137% by studying consumer behavior and gaining a deeper understanding of each customers through the use of predictive models. For healthcare, Utilizing healthcare data, so the healthcare industry employs predictive analytics and modeling to analyze and forecast the future healthcare needs of populations. In the healthcare industry, predictive models help identify activities that increase patient satisfaction, resource utilization, and budget control. Additionally, predictive modeling enables the healthcare industry to optimize patient outcomes through enhanced financial management. So the leading mental health teaching institution in Canada, actually, the Center for Addiction and Mental Health, uses predictive modeling to streamline treatment for uh, their patients and maximize bed space. In banking, 
the banking industry no benefits from predictive analytics by fostering an awareness of credit risk, managing capital and liquidity, and meeting regular leg, regulatory requirements. Requirements. So, model of this uh, predictive analytics provide enhanced detection and protection as well as improved control and compliance because predictive models enable banks and other financial institutions to customize its client interaction, thereby reducing customer churn, gaining customer trust, and producing exceptional customer experience. Uh, actually, in other country, no, a subsidiary of OTP Bank Group like uh, Bank of Romania, no, implements predictive analytics to govern the quality of loan issuance produce more accurate business and risk forecasts, and achieve profit objectives for the bank's traded portfolios. How about when it comes to manufacturing? Uh, it uses predictive modeling to forecast maintenance risk and reduce costs associated with sudden breakdowns. Models of predictive analytics enable businesses <clears throat> to enhance their performance in overall equipment efficiency as well as improve product quality and customer experience. Let's say, for example, yung SPG uh, dry cooling, no? a prominent manufacturer of air-cold condenser, it, it, they employs no? predictive modeling to improve performance insights and optimize maintenance, resulting in increased dependability and cost saving. So once a set of a current and historical data is ready for predictive analysis, the predictive modeling process can begin. And to develop the predictive model, data science expert or analyst generate uh, standard predictive algorithms and statistical models, train them using subsets of the data, and execute them against the entire data set. So how to build a predictive model using simple and easy to understand step? As usual, Number one, data collection. Data collection is the process of data collect. Uh, of, of the, the process of data collection, I mean, is acquiring the information needed for analysis. And it entails you know, obtaining historical data from reliable source to implement predictive analysis. Then after that, number two is data mining. You cleanse your data sets through data mining or data cleaning. And we've done it already in the discussion about data cleaning. Now, you delete incorrect data during the data cleansing process. And the data mining process entails removing identical and redundant data from your data collection. So we discussed it already about the EDA or the exploratory data analysis. The data exploration is essential you know, for the predictive modeling process. You gather critical data and summarize it by recognizing patterns or trends. So exploratory data analysis is the final step in your data preparation phase. Okay? Then predictive model development. You will utilize various techniques to create predictive analytics models based on the patterns you've discovered. As what I have mentioned last time or last last meeting, we, could, we are allowed naman to use different uh, programming language like Python, R programming, or MATLAB, or other programming languages and standard statistical models to test your hypothesis. Another, of course, is the model evaluation. No? Validation is crucial based in predictive analytics. You, you run a series of tests to see how effectively your model can predict outcomes. Given the sample data or input sets to evaluate the model's validity, you must assess the model's accuracy. Okay? Then afterwards, predictive model deployment. So deployment allows you to test your model in a real-world scenario, which helps in practical decisions, making it makes it ready for implementation. Then afterwards, model tracking is just not only implementing or deploying. We need to track, no? check the performance of your models constantly no? to ensure that you are receiving the best future outcomes possible. It involves comparing model predictions to actual data sets. No? So, our presenter earlier discussed the types of predictive models. No? Number one, of course, is the classification model. <clears throat> so, the classification model is one of the most popular predictive analytics models. No? <clears throat> this model performs categorical analysis on historical data. So, various industries adapt classification model because they can retain these models with current data and as a result, they obtain useful and detailed insights that help them build 
appropriate solution because classification models are custom customizable and are helpful across industries, including bank and retail. <clears throat> Number two types of uh, predictive models is the clustering model. <clears throat> so, the clustering model gather the, gathers data and div divides it into groups based on common characteristics. Hard clustering facilitates data classification, no? determining if each data point belongs to a cluster and soft clustering allocates a probability to each data point. In some applications, such as marketing, the ability to partition data into distinct data sets depending on a specific features is highly beneficial. So, a clustering model can help business plan marketing campaigns for certain groups of customers. So, for those who are using digital marketing, uh, they just simply adapting the clustering model under predictive models. Okay? Then, of course, the outlier model will be the number three. Unlike the classification and forecast model, the outlier model deals with anomalo, anomalous, anomalous data items within the set, no? Uh, or within a data set. It works by detecting anomalous data either on its own or with other categories and numbers. So outliers model are essential in industries like retail and finance where detecting abnormalities can save business millions of dollars. No? Outliers model can quickly identify anomalies so predictive analytics models are efficient in fraud detection. Number four is the forecast model. One of the most prominent predictive analytics model is the forecast model. So, uh, even in school, no, especially private, or, no, or even in, U in UDM, no, they were using forecast model for them to hire how many faculties, do they need how many rooms, and so on. And the time actually, the allotted time per section, no, it managed metric value predictions by calculating new data values based on the historical data insights. No? Forecast model also generate numerical values <laughs> if not are present. Okay. <clears throat> One of the most powerful features of forecast models is that they can manage multiple parameters at a time. As a result, they are one of the most popular predictive models in the market. So various industries can use a forecast model for different business purposes. Let's say, for example, uh, a call center uh, can use forecast analytics to predict how many support calls they will receive in a day. Or a retail store can forecast inventory for the upcoming holiday sales period in others. Number five is the time series model. The, the, the time series predictive models analyze data sets where the input parameter is time sequences. No? So the time series model develops a numerical value that predicts trends within a specific period by combining multiple data points no? from the previous year's data. No? So a time series model outperforms traditional ways of calculating a variable's progress because it may forecast for numerous regions or prospect at once or focus on a single area or task depending on the organization's needs. Time series predictive models are helpful if organizations need to know how a specific variable changes over time. Let's say, for example, if a small business owner wishes to track sales over the last four quarters, they will need to use a time series model. It can also look at their external factors like seasons or periodical variations that could influence future trends. No? Because uh, I think we have a, a product that tawag natin is seasonal. No? Okay, like halo-halo, it's seasonal, no? uh, and so on. So predictive modeling techniques in machine learning. So, Predictive modeling as an effective data analytics technique that supports artificial intelligence no? or AI. So with the help of various machine learning tools and techniques, predictive modeling helps predict future events and determines how future decisions affect existing situation. Okay? So there are some overview of the machine learning techniques that are useful in predictive modeling. Our presenter discussed about linear regression. No? One of the simplest machine learning techniques is linear regression. So a generalized linear model uh, models simulates the relationship between one or more independent factors 
and the target response no? or the dependent variable. So linear regression is a statistical approach that helps organizations get insights into customer behavior, business operations, and profitability. No? Regular linear regressions can assess trends and generate estimations or forecasts in business. Let's say, for example, suppose a, an organization sales have increased gradually every month for the past several years. So in that case, the organizations might estimate sales in the coming months by linearly analyzing the sales data with monthly sales. Okay? Then number two is the logistic regression. Logistic regression is a statistical technique for describing, explaining relationship between binary dependent variables and one or more nominal interval or equation level independent variables. Logistic regression allows you to predict the unknown values of a discrete target variable based on known values of other variables. In marketing, uh, the logistic uh, regression algorithm deals with creating probability models that forecast a customer's likelihood of making a purchase using customer data. So giving marketers a more detailed perspective of customer choices offers them the knowledge they need to generate more effective and relevant outputs. Okay? Number three is the decision trees. A decision tree is an algorithm that displays the likely outcomes of various actions by graphing structured or unstructured data into a tree-like structure. So decision trees divide different decisions into branches and then list alternative outcomes beneath each one. It examines the training data and chooses the independent variable that separates it into the most diverse logic category. So the popular of decision trees is themes no, from the fact that they are simple to understand and interpret. So, Decision trees also work with uh, work well with incomplete data sets and are helpful in selecting relevant input variables. So businesses uh, generally leverage decision trees to detect the essential uh, target variable in a data set. And they may also employ them because the model may generate potential outcomes from incomplete data sets. Number four is the gradient boosted model or the gradient boosted model. A gradient boosted model employs a series of related decision trees to, to, to create rankings. No? It builds one tree at a time, no? correcting uh, defects in the first to produce a better second tree. So the gradient boosted model resembles the data sets uh, multiple times to get results that create a weighted average of a, ram, a resample data set. And these models allow certain businesses to predict possible search engine results. So the gradient boosted approach expresses data sets better than other techniques. Hence, it is the best technique for overall data accuracy. And number six, of course, I number five, of course, is the neural networks. So, uh, a while ago, no, our presenter wanted to play an example of a neural network. So neural networks are complex algorithms that can recognize patterns in a given data set. Because actually a neural network is one subject or one course, no? A neural network is help, helpful for clustering data and defining categories for various data sets, no? There are three layers in neural network of the input layer, transfer data to the hidden, play, uh, to the hidden layer, no? Uh, as the name suggests, the hidden layer hides the functions that build predictors. So the output layer gathers data from such predictors and generates a final accurate outcome. And you can use neural networks with other predictive models like time series or clustering. Again, three layer, we have input, transfer, and output layer within the neural networks. The number six is the forest or random forest. No? A random forest is a vast collection of decision trees. It's making its decision, it, uh, it's making it predictions. Now, a random forest can perform both classification and regression. The value of a random vector sampled randomly with the same distribution for all trees in the random forest determines the shape of each tree. So the power of this model comes from the ability to create several trees with various sub-features from the features. So random forest uses the bagging approach. It generates data subset from training samples 
that you can randomly choose with replacement. replacement. Now, how about the predictive modeling techniques in data mining? So a while ago, we, we discussed about the AI. How about in data mining? <clears throat> a data science reaches its peak. No? Predictive modeling appears to be a useful data mining technique, allowing businesses and enterprises to generate predictive results based on data already available. So predictive modeling is a significant part of data mining as it helps better understand future outcomes and shape the decision-making processes to be more precise. And some few examples of predictive modeling techniques in data mining, of course, I don't know if you've heard ARIMA, no? Or ARIMA stands for Automatic Regression Integrated Moving Average, no? ARIMA stands for Auto Regressive, yung, uh, integrated moving average and it's a predictive model based on the assumption that existing values of a time series can alone predict future values so arima models only need previous data from a time series of generalized the forecast this model managed to boost prediction accuracy while keeping the model simplistic arima models use differencing to change a non-stationary time series into a stationary one then use historical data to forecast potential values. And this model used autocorrelation and moving averages over residual data errors to generate predictions. So ARIMA models have a wide range of applications in various industries. It is helpful in demand forecasting, such as predicting future demand and the food industry. And this is mainly because the model offers managers reliable standards for making supply chain decisions. <clears throat> Number two is the support vector machines. Now, uh, SBM are top rated in machine learning and data mining. So the SBM is a data classification technique for predictive analysis. So the support vector machine is data classification technique for predictive analysis that allocates in incoming data items to one of a several specified groups. In most circumstances, SBM or support vector machines act as the binary classifier, which means it considers the data as two possible target values. Compared with other classifiers, support vectors machines offer reliable, accurate predictions and are less prone to overfitting. So SBM transform your data using a technique known as the kernel trick and, the, and then determine an ideal boundary between the potential output based on this alteration. Simply told, it performs some extremely complex data transformation before deciding how to separate your data using the labels or result your choice. And uh, some common frequently asked question on predictive modeling techniques, how to build a predictive model? Siyempre, number one, define the business requirements. Identify and explore data relevant to your analysis. Clean the data and remove any unwanted or redundant data. Perform, uh, perform EDA, exploratory data analysis, and clean data and build a suitable predicted model using statistical data modeling techniques. Validate your model's accuracy and deploy it once the validation is successful. And monitor your model regularly to optimize its performance and others. Now, what are the steps in predictive modeling? So, number one, understand the scope and requirements of the business problem data collection and pre-processing, data cleaning in ADA, predictive modeling building, validating the model, model deployment, as I was mentioned earlier, and monitoring and tracking the model. So, what are predictive modeling techniques? Again, predictive modeling techniques are the various statistical approaches that help us build predictive models using existing data to generate potential future outcomes like logistic regression, linear regression, random forest, decision tree, and k-means. So what are the two techniques associated with predictive modeling? The neural networks and regression are the two techniques associated with predictive modeling. Another frequently asked question, how to select the correct predictive modeling technique? So maybe uh, you're asking, sir, how we will be able to select the correct predictive modeling technique? You can select the correct predictive modeling uh, technique by assessing the available data types and determining the desired forecast nature. You should begin by defining what prediction questions you want to answer 
and more importantly, what you want to do with the results. Identify the strengths of each model and how it may be enhanced using these uh, different predictive analytics algorithms before deciding how to apply them to your business effectively. So predictive modeling is a statistical tool or a statistical technique that is used to predict future outcomes based on historical data. So I think that's it for this. Before I forget, no? KNN is a flexible algorithm that can work with any type of input data and does not make assumptions about the underlying data distribution. It can also uh, handle nonlinear regression between the input features and the target variable. However, KNN can be computationally uh, expensive, no? especially for large data sets and may require significant memory to store the training data. So KNN is also sensitive to the choice of distance metric and may not perform well if the input features have different scales or units. No? Yung K nearest ano natin neighbors, yung KNN. No? So the choice of K is an important hyperparameter in KNN. A small value of K can lead to overfitting, while a large value of K can lead to underfitting. So the value of K can be chosen using techniques such as cross-validation of or grid search. Okay, so I think that's it for this topic.